Yes, to City Councilman Corey Roman. Corey, good morning to you. Good morning, fellas. And, you know, one thing that, that took me from the last interview you all did, um, when you asked her the size of her village, mm -hmm. um, she said it's around 20,000 yeah. people. I, it, it initially hit me, you know, Martinsburg's right around 19,000 mm -hmm. yeah. people. Um, you know, so that, that connection was made there to where um, I, I don't, you know, know that I would be as composed as she was, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, as soon as, you know, the, the natural disaster had happened. So that was one thing that, you know, you had mentioned as well, yeah. just her, her overall composure um, in the moment was something that really struck me. Yeah. And one of the things we tend to forget about in these disasters uh, is you lose all your privacy. Mm -hmm. Everything is open to everybody around you. And that in its own light, own self, I find would be very, very, very difficult. Plus the fact people around you, m many are hurting from physical injury. Mm. Most all of them are hurting with emotional injury emotional. right now. So yeah. it's hard to find something positive, yet Rhonda was able to find that positive aspect. Yes, she was. I'm going to go find some negative stuff here for a moment. Uh, bear with me. I had I started a labor management discussion on our Facebook page when I brought up the UAW <laughs> contract, uh, which Friday – it seems like they're going to strike no matter what, uh, and they may do it across all aspects of UAW, uh, all the auto manufacturers. Uh, Brad Knoll posted a thought, and I want to make sure I read it. Rarely does a company give anything when doing well in today's America. Many years ago, if companies did well, they shared the wealth with employees by increasing wages and benefits. They recognized the workers' efforts in making quality products. Today, they give bonuses to CEOs and managers. And uh, that was liked, I think, by three people. And when I read that, I know Brad's been a union guy his whole life, but I grew up in a Teamsters household where all my most of my father's brothers were Teamsters as well. I don't remember that time ever growing up in Pittsburgh. I don't remember that time for a single day in my life. My father's union went on strike for everything they ever got. There was never a time a contract ended when they didn't go on strike that I remember in my lifetime. And it was the same with the steel workers. I never remember a day reading in history when Andrew Carnegie went down and said, you know what, here's an extra two cents for your day of wages because we did well. If that was the case, Corey, Unions wouldn't exist. <laughs> wouldn't be a union. <laughs> no, that's. I don't remember a day in my life in labor management when management yeah. went, you know what, you guys are doing great, here's more money. But all those libraries needed to be built some way. <laughs> yeah, if if Carnegie was as generous with his with his with his workers as he was giving his money away later in his life, and Mellon, we wouldn't have steel unions. We, there wouldn't be the, the labor wars that we had, where where people died to, to try to get uh, a, a forty hour work week. That wouldn't have existed if they were. The, I don't remember that time, Brad. Maybe it happened in your life. It didn't happen in mine. Now I come from the rural sections of Tennessee. Uh, farming. So unions do not exist. Uh, large companies do not exist. Should I strike Hornby? Should yes. I look for higher wages here? So I need advice from a union person. Being as that I work for Mr. Hornby, I cannot advise you on labor relations between Mr. Hornby and Mr. Stubblefield. Okay, I'm just I'm just Smart looking man. for guidance. If you want to go on strike, please wait till uh, Gilstrap comes back next week. <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll help. That'll help. Right? Corey, you guys are um, about to vote in a uh, a new city manager now. Yes, and if I could just mention one thing before we get started here, sure. I have it in my notes. Um, I know you mentioned earlier Hudson Clement. Yeah. Um, shout out to those guys. I have a I have a list here of some other skill players from Martinsburg. Um, I want to give a shout out to Jacob Barrick. Um, who's at Jacksonville State. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he had a couple receptions over the weekend. Cool. Um, Naeem Kearney um, is at Georgetown. Um, he had 190 yards and three touchdowns. And more importantly, um, is that Georgetown degree? Yeah, Get that it? is that is huge. Get it, Naeem. And that is, that is, he is a smart kid. His, his brother's at Martinsburg now doing very well as well. Um, obviously, we mentioned Hudson. Um, you know, five receptions, 177 yards, and three touchdowns. And then we also had Malachi Brown here at Shepard um, who had multiple touchdowns. So I just wanted to – and that's skill players. You know, we mm -hmm. obviously have a lot of local, um, you know, uh, guys that, that more of the, the grunt work. You know, yep. we have linemen, defensive linemen. Um, well, you don't care of, about them, do you, Corey? I, you only like no. the skill players. Hey, I'll tell you, if I didn't Cowboy care – Cowboy fans. If I didn't care, I wouldn't even have mentioned the guys. But I really do. Um, but they don't get the headlines that these other skill players do get. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I did mention that we do have a lot of good talent, specifically coming from Martinsburg, um, mm -hmm. that is making, you know, uh, Martinsburg well-known, but then also making a, a name for themselves on the at the next level. So. My guy Cam Dorner, who I coached in high school, he had yep. uh, 
uh, 10 catches for 201 and a touchdown in the Shepherd win. And uh, Josh Crummett, who was my starting center last year at Oakdale, Boom. Uh, he filled in at center while the starting center got injured uh, Saturday. So uh, a couple of guys from, the, from my high school, Oakdale and Frederick, that did well. Corey, is very appropriate and very nice of you to single out Martinsburg. Why aren't you wearing a Martinsburg, uh, Martinsburg sweater at Dallas Cowboy? What are you doing, Corey? Yeah, so, um, you know, last night – there was a, a, a great event that happened. There Cowboys. Was a, there was Cowboys a great, fans. great event. Should we just give you the Super Bowl and, trophy now? I think you should. Dallas. Um, you know, especially, you know, if there's any Giants fans out there, sorry about it. I, I'll i tell you, 40 to nothing, I had the Cowboys defense on my fantasy team oh, as you well. Did well. They put up 35 points for me. Mm-hmm. 35 points. On the flip side, I had Lamar Jackson as my quarterback. He put up six. Six points. That's and guess good. who I had on my bench? Tua. To attack yeah, he, had, he put up 28 points 400 and something yards passing it's it was a crazy weekend um for sports all around but i do you know i just wanted to make sure this morning and shout out to mike height if he's listening you know our boys um they put it on them oh, new york quote unquote <laughs> new york football giants whatever they want to call themselves um but you know the cowboys run the nfc east and uh this is our year. Every year is your year, Corey. <laughs> Cowboys fans every year winning the Super Bowl. We know that. <laughs> Just best. All right, but man. It's cool. That's back right. to like you were saying, yes, Andy Blake. Um, you Thursday, know, Thursday, right? Thursday night. Um, it's going to be on our council agenda. Um, you know, he was unanimously moved on from, um, you know, the interview process. I was actually um, on vacation um, when that the, the group um, interview had happened. But I had already talked with Andy before I had left. And obviously I feel very comfortable um, with Andy Blake and you know he has been with the city administration now for for a few years and you know working directly under Mark Baldwin um, you know he's been involved in every project we've had you know and he's, he was with the county before exactly. so he knows the county he knows yep. the city and he was also well. down in Jefferson County exactly. working yep. with municipalities mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. so it's somebody that I really do have trust in um, and you know I think that he's going to be able to carry us forward with with the, the multitude of things Martinsburg's going to have to face and that's next month right yes October 28 I believe is the um, would be his start date all right hey let's talk about lambert park yes. jim klein held a meeting uh last yes. week a town town hall style meeting where he got some input from people about parks and rec mm-hmm. lambert park a part of that as well i know you were in attendance your observations no i thought it, i thought it was really good um you know it was um you know kind of just the the general um theme of you know the conversation i would say that you you probably heard it from the 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 intro was that communication um was something that was brought up a lot with the different folks um folks didn't know um, you know, necessarily what was going on at Lambert. They didn't know the different opportunities we had for folks to get across town to, you know, uh, War Memorial. Um, folks, you know, um, when the press release came out initially, I know that you all probably remember for the splash pad, um, it was a, a 3D rendered drawing, which was just a generic drawing. Um, that, that kind of got a lot of people um, sparked up you know, interested in the the uh, situation as a whole, um, because a lot of folks were saying, you know, they didn't want to just see a, a splash pad. Um, and I, I was one I was one of those folks because, you know, I, I just genuinely believe that um, a splash pad limits, obviously, your recreational activities. Um, so, you know, it was it was very good, though. You know, I, I, it, I thought it was good to hear from, you know, different members of the community. Um, we had different lawmakers there. We had legislators. We had county commissioners. Um, you know, we had folks from Parks and Rec. Um, obviously, the mayor was there. Well, I understand only Jennifer Smith from Parks and Rec. Yeah. Was yeah. Eddie Gokenauer, who's the county liaison, yeah. but was there anybody otherwise from Parks and Rec? No, there was no um, staffers or, um, you know, anybody. But Jen Smith, I believe, is their board president. Um, so I, I, at least we got somebody to show up, in my opinion. And I do, I do give uh, Jen Smith credit for showing up and, and taking the, the hard questions that folks were asking. Yeah, I don't. This could be implied as throwing a kind of a low blow at the uh, city council. I don't mean for it to be the case, uh, but we've had a lot of controversy, a lot of unknowns about the uh, park, uh, Lambert Park, and Parks and Rec in general. Why did it take someone like Jim Klein, who at this stage is just a regular citizen? Why is it, Why did not the county council? Uh, initiate this city council sorry initiate this before now no i think that um and even jim had mentioned this and i don't i I give him credit for i do too for bringing for bringing for bringing the 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 community together um the city hasn't had an opportunity to have a public hearing yet why not Um, we have opportunity every every week you have an opportunity we do have opportunity but why why do a public hearing if we don't have our bid numbers back yet we so we we sent out to the engineer contract multiple different plans 
So the plan was once we get these numbers back and we see all the different options that we have to do with the park, then we're going to open up to the public and say, hey, we would love to hear your input. Because it, in my opinion, if we had a public hearing before we even got the numbers back, the, the conversation may be going everywhere. So so I could imply from that that uh, the meeting, that a public meeting which Jim Klein initiated was one, either premature or not particularly productive. No, I, w I wouldn't say that it's not productive because, like I said, any time that we can get together with the constituents in the community to hear their thought, I think that it's it's not a waste of time. So I would definitely say it was productive. Um, but one thing that, you know, even the mayor and um, Andy Blake was present that night, we are going to have public hearings, um, you know, once we get these figures back and then we can open it up to the public to hear exactly what they would like to do. Because obviously if the city gets back all these figures, we could sit down easily in a meeting that probably won't, as you can attest to, probably won't be attended heavily um, and sit back and make the decision on what we believe would be the best for Lambert. But we want it to be open to the public. That's it's it's not the the city council's park it's the community's park but we want to ensure that the the community does have a say in that so once we get these figures back we're expecting at the end of october we're definitely going to have public hearing we're definitely going to have opportunity for folks to be able to come in give their opinion on the different plans that we have proposed and how many see where it goes there how many people were in attendance um if i if i had to guess i'd probably say 20 25 that's about what jim said yeah i'd say yeah. 20 25 and like i said it was i thought it was a good conversation um you know and I don't want to say it was premature, but if I think that if the city would have had opportunity to get these these bid numbers back, um, that we had full intention to do a public hearing style, like we do with any other piece of large, um, you know, a, a large ordinance or legislation, you could say that's going to affect the community as a whole. Do you hold out hope for a swimming pool still? Oh, I do, um, and honestly, just. I have hope for a swimming pool. My, my big thing that I'm waiting on is to see these numbers coming back in. What do the engineers say that we can do with that existing property? Um, what are the challenges? Um, and honestly, the bottom line, what is going to be the dollar amount that we're going to have to put into to have all the different variations of what could be, in my eyes, acceptable recreation? Have, got, you, had, have you had preliminary talks with the county to see if you can do some call sharing? No, no. I know that um, I, I won't speak for the mayor. Um, I know that he has talked, you know, at least to me and then to the count, the council as a whole about community partners um, and that we are going to want, you know, various community partners involved. Um, I'm not sure that that's happened yet. Um, I would say probably once these numbers, these figures start to come back in, that that's when the, the conversations may start to, to happen to say, hey, this, this figure is a little bit too large, but we want to ensure that we do it right. Can can we come in on this project? Some have some type of cost sharing or some type of agreement that to where we can move forward. But as it was stated that night, the city is moving forward with something at Lambert Park, no matter what. So you put a bid out to mm -hmm. get these numbers. Yeah. Uh, what did you? What did the bid include? So it was, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So four different variations, um, or five: um, a splash pad. Um, I believe it was indoor, outdoor. Um, and then splash pad with competition pool, um, splash pad with um, just like a wading pool. Um, and then also they're, they're also looking at fixing what is already there. Um, so it's a multitude of things, different recreation opportunities, as well as, um, you know, just a, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I would just call it like a, a general recreation pool, maybe not a competition pool um, was one of the options to where, you know, we could have different options so like volleyball, um, basketball, you know, different things that folks are doing in the water nowadays. But we have a multitude of different um, examples that are going to be brought brought to us at the end of was, October. Was an enclosed pool among those? Uh, I'm not, I'd, I'd have to go back and look at the list. Um, I'm not sure, but I do know that, and we've, we've all talked about this before, if it's going to be something that is an indoor pool, we are a thousand percent going to need community partners. You're going to need. That's, you know, the number then is going to jump up. Exactly. A staggering yeah. amount. That's where the um, county and then the hospital gets involved, uh, people are saying as well. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's where, you know, we, we really do need community partners for to do something right in my opinion. Corey, the, the land around Lambert Park, yeah. Steve Catlett has mentioned many times when he was director of Parks and Rec, now he's a county commissioner, that's just not conducive to a swimming pool in that area. It leads to problems. Yeah. So is it really worth it to try to put another pool in there in, I th in regards to those issues? I think that's the big thing that our engineers are going to be able to tell us, um, like whether or not, you know, um, because I think that these problems were known when Lambert was built, in my opinion, in the first place, and they 
still went ahead with the problem. So I'm not quite but sure. Lambert's how old? Uh, 50, 35, 40 years? I mean, it might be, I've heard 70s. When it was okay. Built. So yeah, even, it might be 50 years. Even so. though problems yeah. may have been identified up yeah. front, yeah. you've still gotten 35 to 70 years out of it, which well, is pretty impressive. Well, that, that's that's the, the comment I was trying to make there. It's we do know that there are problems out there with the, um, you know, what's under under the ground. Um, but that's what the engineers are going to come back with. You know, they're going to tell us what what's going to be the best option for us to move forward. Um, and, and then we're going to obviously sit back, hear from the public, um, and then make the best decision for the city of Martinsburg moving forward long term. Because so, like we don't we don't want to be in the same situation we're in now, 10, 15 years down the road to where the city it's only by the will of the city council that um, a, a park is open. So we want to make sure that we make the right decision. But I think that's what the engineers are really going to help us with. Some of the other complaints had to do with basketball, a yeah. couple of different levels of that. Yeah. Are you getting any closer to getting that straightened out with Parks and Rec? No, I, I, I don't have anything specific. And, you know, that's something, um, and I know you've, you've alluded to it before, I would, I'd love to hear their board come on and explain, um, you know, some of the reasonings and, and the 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 thought process um, behind some of the decisions they make, but I, I, I would believe it's for a good reason. I'm not sure if, you know, um, participation is low in the fall league considering, you know, you, you get ready for winter basketball, which is the big rec league in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's, you know, they said we're going to move it to the Randy Smith center and then consolidate the league so that we can have full teams. Um, I'm not sure. Um, and I do think that, you know, that's something that, that needs to be addressed moving forward. Um, and, like I like I've said before, um, Parks and Rec um, w works on many fronts. Um, you know, they 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 focus on the, the different parks um, outside of the city and within the city. Um, it's a lot to manage. It, it is a it's a lot to manage, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have answers to these mm -hmm. to these broad questions we have. Was Jen Smith um, able to provide you with any answers as to the reasoning regarding the basketball situation? I, I don't want to speak for her, um, but if if my memory is right. I believe it had to do with participation. Why? Why they consolidated to one league for the fall? That, if I had to try to remember. What do she do said. we know? Do the do the when Bob Williams was on and talked mm -hmm. about this, he spoke about it as, I don't want to say a dispassionate observer, yeah. but it sounded like well the decision was made, and I never once heard him say I made the decision. It was well the decision was made to. So are these decisions being made at the board level and, and take and then to, Bob's told what to do? Or does Bob make the recommendation that goes to the board level and then Bob implements it? I, I cannot I cannot tell you the exact structure of how that board operates. I can't um, either. But I would I would I've assume, tried, but I can't. I would assume that the decisions are made as a board um, and then that directors director Bob Williams job is to implement what the board does um so i'm not sure if you know it is coming directly from the board itself or if it's you know like a, a head down su quote unquote suggestion mm -hmm. that the board um do these types of things i i'm not exactly sure and you know i i, I would love to see more transparency from their board not as i know you would as a radio host <laughs> I, I would assume that you hire a person to do that and that yeah. the board doesn't make micromanage decisions like well there's only 18 basketball players so let's merge them over there i would assume that's bob's job but i don't know I, mean, I am not sure, um, and I do believe, you know, if, if you can get Bob on again or maybe maybe somebody from the board, um, I think that, you know, they may be Make able a note. To, to give you a bit more of insight how their board operates because I, I honestly have not been able to attend one of their board meetings in a while. Um, they're during the week at, at odd times, mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, so I, I haven't been able to keep up with it, but I, I do um, plan to, you know, check in with our liaison, um, you know, just to – to see if he has a, a broader sense of exactly what's going on. Because Who's the city council um, liaison? If I'm correct, it's it's Ken Collinson. But we also okay. have um, you know various appointments to that board. Um, so you know we do have city folks that are they're serving on the board. But it appears to me uh, Parks and Rec is on a slippery slope right now. Uh, after the leadership of Steve Catlett for 40 years, 35, 40 years. Uh, Parks and Rec was kind of on a pedestal, and they could do no wrong. We may not agree necessarily they did, but they were they respect what they did. Now, because of apparent lack of communication, uh, people doubts are are surfacing. Uh, are they what are they doing? Uh, everything appears behind a closed door. Uh, I would think it be behold the the board, Parks and Rec staff, and 
the city council to stop the slide and slope as quick as you can because it's just going to get go faster and faster and there's going to be more doubts um, uh, that emerge and weave in now i think that's i think that's a, a valid um you know observation of the of the situation as a whole um you know when i first came on council i know that you know there was turnover um at the the administrative level with parks and rec um so you know i figured that there would be a couple bumps along the way um you know with getting new new staff and new people imp implemented um but i do agree with you um that you know we we do have to to ensure um not not check on we have to ensure that um you know the money and the taxpayers of the city of martinsburg are getting what they are putting into the park system yeah. as a whole you're exactly right corey there's going to be bumps along the road and everybody anticipates that and those are forgivable what is not forgivable is feeling there is no communication yeah. everything is taking the attitude we know what we're doing yeah. trust us we'll do it right we'll let you know after the fact what we've done uh that to me is a a recipe for disaster and with this slippery slope i alluded to is going to just get higher and higher and faster and faster i i can agree i can agree to you and and one thing that you know obviously we have a, a weird park system considering it is county and and city combined um i can ensure that you know every dollar that that the city is putting into it um we are following up with and we are ensuring that you know these projects are moving forward um i, I cannot speak to the rest of the county um, but I do, I do know that you know the members that we appoint, um, and you know the mayor and our liaison are ensuring that the dollars that the city council is giving to them is going to be done the right way, and that's that's as a, as a whole. And you know we talk about this Lambert situation, we want to ensure that we do it right, um, because at the at the end of the day, it's not about politics, it's not about um, you know Democrat Republican. That's what I love about local government. Um, it's about doing the right thing for the community, and we want to ensure that we do that. Speaking of government, Corey, the American flag hat. <clears throat> is that just simply a reflection of America's team, Dallas Cowboys, or does the American flag hat a precursor of an announcement at some point that Corey Roman's running for another office? So one one beautiful thing, um, we are Cowboys. We are America's team. Um, so I'm told. Don't don't get it twisted. Um, don't get it twisted. Um, also, this hat, um, I just I put it on today um, because today's September 11th. Yes. Um, you know, I was I was one years old. Um, on the day when it happened and I, I've grown up um, you know my first memories of this day are, are patriotic memories um, mm -hmm. you know and making sure that we remember the people that were lost um, and the folks that that we lost afterwards who um, you know went overseas to um, try and rid um, the Middle East of these these bandits as I'll call them um, every day when I wake up you know specifically on these days I, I feel thankful to be an American um, I'm thankful to, to still be here and I'm thankful for the folks that we lost um, that day and then the, the multiple days afterwards and before, you know, fighting for, for the freedom I have in this country. So I, I won't say anything about, you know, my candidacy. Um, I don't have anything <laughs> planned yet, um, but I do want to ensure that, you know, today um, this was on top of my head um, to ensure that, you know, I show my love for my country. Very nice. Well said. Good to see you again. Thank you, fellas. I hope you all have a good day. Corey Roman, City Councilman, City of Martinsburg at 933.